Hey guys, I'm Joey van Miesen. I am a military historian and I'm a battlefield traveler and researcher. And today I'm making a video about five sites, five Battle of the Bulge spots that you can visit during your travels uh, to the Ardennes in the upcoming months or the upcoming years. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I get questions from people who are going to the Ardennes and they're saying like, hey Joe, where should I go? This video is my answer to that question and to make everything easy for you guys, I created a Google Maps um, waypoint thing that you can click on in the link down below. And if you access this on your phone, it will make it so much easier for you because you can just navigate to the waypoints that I set and that I named after each of the sites uh, that I will be listing in this video. So if you guys are ready, I am ready. So I'd like to kick off this list with the site where you can find these German anti-tank Dragon Teeth uh, obstacles, which were part of the Siegfried Line, also known as the West Wall, which is a defensive line uh, which stretches, I think, more than 319 miles all the way on the German western border with the rest of Europe. And basically, you can find these right here at this spot between the towns of Hellenthal and Losheimer Graben. Uh, an area that was part of the Battle of the Bulge because the Germans attacked this site here, crossed the border here from Germany into Belgium on December 16th, 1944. And at the site where I'm standing, you can find this monument dedicated to the 99th Infantry Division uh, who had their position here in the woods uh, at this specific site. And you can still find foxholes, trenches, and it is really neat uh, if you're going to visit this. If you, you know, if to visit these foxholes and just read a little bit about what happened here. At the same time, the monument that stands there has an interesting other side. Because on the other side of the monument, you see that the, it is engraved the 277th Volksgrenadier Division, uh, which are the German unit that attacked the 99th Infantry Division here on December 16th, 1944. So, you are hitting two birds in one stone when visiting the site, because at first you're just visiting the woods, visiting the foxholes, and at the same time you can get a really, really close look of these dragon teeth obstacles, which in my my opinion are a very, very identical part of the battlefields here. And therefore I think you should visit it, take a look at it, take some photographs, because it will look amazing to see those in the countryside. And I think you, will, you won't regret visiting this site. Now I suggest you get this book, A Tour of the Battle of the Bulge Battlefields, because it has some maps and it has more background information on this site. Um, highly suggest you get it down. Link is down in the description. Uh, but you should definitely get the book because it will help you so much with your travels to the Battle of the Bulge and specifically this site. So. The second side is known as the Worth 11, and the Worth 11 stands for 11 African American soldiers who were brutally massacred on the second day of the Battle of the Bulge near the town in the town of Worth, Belgium. And basically, these, these guys were part of the 333rd Field Artillery Battalion, uh, who were in support of the 106th Infantry Division during the start of the Battle of the Bulge. Now, the 106th Infantry Division took a real, real beating, really, really bad. Um, and these guys especially those guys from the 333rd, uh, were actually ordered to fall back to Bastogne on December 17th. However, Battery C and Service Battery were outflanked and overrun. And these 11 guys from uh, mostly Service Battery um, ended up in the town of Rivert. They were taken in by a farmer named Matthias Langer, uh, who gave them shelter. And unfortunately, this area has been part of uh, Germany before the First World War and after the First World War it was annexed by Belgium. So the people here in this area, uh, they really, really sympathized with the Germans. So one woman from the village uh, reported to the German 1st SS Division that those guys were hiding. They went to the farm, took the guys prisoner, unfortunately marched them out to the field. They, res they, did, they didn't even resist. but. Um, they were killed in a field nearby and uh, 
it's a real sad story, but today you can still visit the site where it happened. There's a couple of monuments, and some of the guys are even buried in Henry Chappell, uh, the Belgian cemetery. Uh, and I suggest you just read more about this story. An interesting fact is that the rest of uh, the 333rd Field Artillery Battalion made it back to Bastogne and helped there during the defense. Uh, even got a presidential unit citation for that. It's something you never hear about. But these men from the world, from the world 11, those 11 guys, I think their story should never be forgotten. I think it's one of, one of the most interesting stories here in Belgium that you should just, that, that we never hear about. And that's why I think you should visit the site. So let's go to the third site, which is also, unfortunately, a massacre. We will be talking about the Malmedy Massacre. And we all know what the Malmedy Massacre, uh, we've all probably heard of the most uh, infamous massacre, uh, war crime uh, of the Second World War, but basically on the December 17th, uh, 1944, uh, a convoy from uh, the 285th Field Artillery Observation Battalion uh, was trying to link up uh, with the 7th Armored Division to the south and they passed through Malmody over the crossroads here at Bagnier. Uh, German tanks opened up on the first and last vehicles halting the column. Uh, this these German vehicles belonged to the notorious Kampfgruppe Piper under command of Jochen Piper. They captured the men, um, took them prisoner, and then while Piper, Jochen Piper, his Kampfgruppe, and he himself then tried to continue their advance, uh, which they did. And then after, shortly after that, the rear echelon of his, his Kampfgruppe killed the guys, killed the prisoners of war. 84 prisoners of war, 84 men were killed. And uh, some of the men played dead. Some of the men uh, tried to escape, which they did. But 88 bodies were found after the battle. Um, there's just, just so much to talk about it. I suggest you read the book, Fatal Crossroads by Danny S. Parker. Link down in the description. And if you want to get a grasp of what I'm talking about, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I suggest you watch the intro of the Saints and Soldiers movie. Do that, then read the book. And the main thing that you should read on and visit is just the monument itself at the crossroad. So the fourth side that you should visit is, I think, the only surviving King Tiger here on the Western Front. But I'm not so sure about that. It's the King Tiger 213 in the town of La Glise. And uh, this is a monster, this is a huge, this is a beast. And uh, I have seen this tank since I was growing up. Ever, ever During every visit to the Ardennes, I've probably seen this tank as a kid. Now, the story behind it is also very interesting. It was part uh, of, of Kampfgruppe Piper that we just talked about in the Malmody Massacre. Now, the tank itself, the number 213, was under command of uh, Obersturmführer uh, Dollinger. The tank had to be left behind while uh, Comfort Piper retreated back to, uh, you know, eventually they were surrounded. They had to fall back on the, on, on the night of December 24th. So, this tank stayed here until after the war. And as we know, after the war, a massive cleanup of the battlefields took place. And this tank also had to be, it had to be removed. It was standing near the farm of Mrs. Jenny Genen, Genen, Jenny, Jenny Genen Dewe Dewes. I don't even know how to pronounce it. The name is right here in the bottom. Um, uh, basically, uh, she 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 made a little deal with the Americans who tried to uh, clean up the tank. She uh, she made sure that the tank stayed there. She made a nice trade. She offered the man a bottle of cognac, and they accepted. That's all it takes, and the rest. And the faith of the tank was sealed. That's why we can still see it today. And basically, it has been it has been staying here at the site uh, in Laglis ever uh, since the war. And I think it's 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 such a monster. I'm gonna say it again, but that is why you should visit this site. A lot of the American soldiers and British soldiers, Allied soldiers, they just feared the Tiger tank. And now we have one here in the town of Lagli. So if you're going to the Ardennes, you should visit it. Uh, so the last site that we are going to cover for this video is the town of Sel, or as the Dutch people like to say, Selus, Selus, Selus. We like to pronounce the S. I am Dutch. I am Dutch myself, so I can make this joke. <laughs> anyway, guys, never mind that. 
So the town of Sel is basically the it marks the furthest point of the German advance for the Battle of the Bulge. It marks the furthest point of advance westward, and it's the closest they got to Antwerp uh, during the Battle of the Bulge, which was the main goal of the Battle of the Bulge, Antwerp. Now. The German 2nd Panzer Division captured the town on December 24th, 1944, and after two days of heavy battle, the German 2nd Panzer Division lost it on December 25th, 1944. When visiting this site, you can hit two birds with one stone because, well, first, you're visiting the furthest point of defense that the Germans ever did, and you can visit this wonderful uh, Panzer tank that is still standing there, which was part of the battle near Sel uh, on December 24th. Uh, but it is still standing there, and you can visit it, you can see it too, right on the crossroads at the town. Now, the tank here, it's the, the, the Panther tank, was the leading tank of Kampfgruppe von Kochenhausen that fought in the area. Now, on December 24th, they detonated a mine which immobilized the tank and left it unusable in a field near the town of Sel. And um, after the battles, somehow, in a mysterious way, someone or a group of people, whatever, they don't know, like they, they took the hatchet, they took the tracks, they took the wheels, and then it's all gone. Probably because it, 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 it was uh, usable for stuff or they could, get, they could make money out of it. But anyway, years later the tank was as a, put as a monument at the crossroads in the town and it still has no tracks, no, no, no hatchet and no wheels. So that is very, very, that's, that's I think that makes the tank a... Uh, really interesting thing to see um, but yeah you should visit it because it's the furthest point of advance for the German offensive westward and you can just spot a, a German Panther tank there which is an incredible monster now this covers the video this covers five sides five spots for you to visit and I hope this was useful for you if you don't want to read but you still want more information and have a great time in the Ardennes I suggest you get a tour guide now my friend Bob Konings has a bed and breakfast in the Ardennes and he does tours. He's a he is the best researcher, one of the best researchers, uh, and one of the best tour guides that I know. Um, I'm re I'm a researcher myself, so I I know, you know, I can say that he is doing an amazing job, and he's such a great storyteller. And he actually does Johan Piper tours, Kampfgruppe Piper tours. We covered two sides of Kampfgruppe Piper here in this video, but I suggest you get Bob as your tour guide, and. Uh, let me know if you're doing that, leave it in the comments down below. Anyways, I hope this video was useful for you. If it was, click subscribe because I'm gonna make more videos like this. And also click the like button, it will help me out. And if you wanna follow me on Instagram for behind the scenes or interesting World War II photographs, or if you wanna know more about my daily life, follow me on Instagram, jodymedio underscore ww2. Thanks for watching guys, salute, see you next time, bye bye.